Well, good evening. 56. Um, DVD. Love the new shells. Yeah. This was in my original Bearded Welshman's uh, pipe den, I guess. What I used to can hang, uh, used to have all my pipe stuff on. See, some of you probably will recognize it. But, uh, I had it out somewhere else. We weren't using it. I thought I'd put it back back to use what I like using it for because it's got drawers in it. It's got some drawers in it over here. And I can put some supplies and stuff in it. It's nice. It's not bad. Excuse me while I fill up my lighter. Should have done this beforehand, but... Is what it is. I'll say hello to everybody here in a minute. Trying to get everything situated. So let's try this again. So you have 56, you were asking about the weather. I was going to do this outside, but it's very cold today. So, I'm going to lower the brightness on my... Computer. It's very cold out. Um, it's actually in the 40s, but it feels like it's in the low 30s because it's very windy. So not a good night. I'm kind of disappointed. Once my uh, once my fire pit gets erected, Then uh, we'll be doing them out there. I hope. I hope. But I got other things to take. Got a lot of other things to take care of right now. So as soon as I can, I can't see the people popping up. So as soon as I get this thing to. fire up the computer then I'll be able to all right there we go so all right there we go now we're up and running See how far behind I am. PBD 56. The one simplex one. Good evening. JMZ 56. Rock Rider. Let's see who else has commented here. Anybody yet? I think I'm all caught up. Well, welcome. Got my coffee, cowboy coffee tonight, just black. Of course, yeah, look at that, look at that. That's a nice, that's some strong coffee tonight. And to let you know, I'm smoking my 1932 Tracy Mincer. And I'm smoking in one of my favorite blends, which I don't have much of, Stonehaven. Very, very great blend. Let's 
see how we do this. All right, my computer's rebooting. I think we're going to have problems with the internet. We have a high wind advisory out tonight. Lane 1Q56 Medina. That's good stuff right there, baby. Got about five pounds of that stuff sitting in my cellar. I'm smoking an SG Sam Godwin 1792 Flake 2015. There you go. That's some good stuff right there, too. So, if my computer doesn't work, I'm just going to go to the phone to read the comments because it's hard to see the comments on there. Yeah, yeah. We got we got issues. We got some serious issues with the internet. Sutliff coconut almond. Never heard of that one. I mean, her Sutliff M4 original. I got some M4 blend. I think I have uh, Virginia. Let's do uh, live chat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Horatio. Uh, I, I like, you know, there's the Lane 1Q that's an aromatic. There's the Boswell's Best that's the aromatic. And then I like the Englishes. And then, you know, now we're getting in. You now I got Penzance, uh, Stonehaven. Thanks to old Dirty Piper. Uh, he got me turned on to Penzance and old uh, Stonehaven and. You know, it's just, I'm a, I'm a wide, I got a wide variety. Freaking chair. A little carpet. I have a wide range. A wide range of what I, uh, man, this computer's just not working right. Of what I smoke. I got privateer, exotic, uh, mixture, gaslight GLPs that, Mark TPI sent me. That's great stuff. Oh, let's do this without dropping all the tins. Then I got John Cotton, Virginia. Excellent, excellent. Aaron Morflake. Robert McConnell's Red, Virginia. Of course. And I got plenty of that too. So. I've got uh, I've got quite the mix. I got Heinrich's Curly, special Curly. I got Svenborg Danish mixture. Um, I got quite. Oh, and I forgot. Uh, Seattle Pipe Club Plum Pudding Special Reserve. Which is very good. Yes, Colt Red Moon. Um, it's very good, very sweet. Uh, I wouldn't smoke it in a briar. It'll ghost your pipe. Um, my beloved Svenborg got ghosted. It took me a long time, long time to get that. out of my pipe and my beloved Svenborg tonight uh, last week the video where I was at um, Boswell's I left it there they're gonna clean up this the stem and they're putting stems on a couple pipes that I needed stems for so I get that back Thursday Um, 
Yeah, in a cob, and I would reserve. I have a cob reserved for the really, the Colt Blood Red Moon. Devil's Holiday is like the Colt Blood Red Moon, the the fruity, tasting tobaccos, um, cause they ghost my briars, so. Special curly, um, yeah, um, I like it. It's good. Haven't smoked it in a little while. Um, not one of my more, not one of my favorite blends. Uh, I tried it on a whim because I saw a review on it. I probably smoked it like three three bowls out of it. So I haven't smoked a whole lot of it, but it's good. And um, if you like it, if you like it, smoke it, you know? It's Peter Heinrichs, Peter Heinrichs, um, got some good tobaccos and it's, it's a sweet, mild, it's sweet. You know, I don't know, honey aroma, I guess is what it is. Um, not, not too rough. It's not too rough on the palate. It's, a, it's good on the palate. Now I gotta get that lined up. Eh. So, other than that, not a whole lot going on. Uh, Yeah, the Meershams pipe time. I, I that's what I've heard. The Meershams are good for blends like that. And uh, they don't seem to ghost. I had a Meersham, not a big fan. Gave it away. It was a small Meersham pipe. Elizabethan's one of my favorites. You know, that's one of my all-time favorites. Be very careful. It dries out quickly. That's funny, Simplex, because I'm I'm kind of uh, I'm the guy that uh, I'm the guy that says you can never smoke anything bad in a cob. What's up with that? My shirt's I buttoned it right, I think. Yeah, you can never smoke anything bad in a cob. Cobb smokes everything nicely. I mean, I love smoking my cobs. Hey, Kirk. How are you doing, brother? Um, strong smoke? Mm. You're talking about the Elizabethan? Being a strong smoke? Uh... Kind of, if you're not used to something like that, it would be. Uh, I like it. I don't think it's that strong. Anything that's really strong, I'll smoke with a filter pipe. Yeah, the Peterson, the Elizabethan, Dunhill, Peterson, it don't matter. Um, it, it can be, but the way I generally smoke the stronger tobaccos is, if it's ta if it tastes strong in a non-filter pipe, it is non-filter. Next time I smoke it, I'll smoke it in a filter pipe. And that way it won't be so so much. Hey, Patches. Polish Piper, welcome. Uh, and then that way it's not too bad for me. Old Dark Fire Ready Rub. Good stuff. And I just... Made a mess of my desk. But this Stonehaven, if you can get it, Stonehaven, Peacehaven, um, any of the esotericas, excellent, excellent. Good stuff, good smoking stuff. So, 
how's the weather where everybody else is at? We're, we're, we had a day and a half of just rain, steady rain. And I live kind of on the downslope of a, this used to be all farmland back up in here. My house was the first house that was built back in 56, long before I was born. And this was all farmland. And now, with all this built up back here, all the water runs down. And it seems to gather in my backyard up against the house, which kind of sucks. So they put French drains in all around the basement. And my sump pump is pumping water out all the time. But it gets so saturated with heavy rains, it just there's like a lake outside my back door, which I hate. So this year, I'm going to figure out a way to fix that because I am getting tired of it. Margate, yeah, Polish Piper. Margate was the only thing he had. He had two bags left. Minus 25 Celsius. Yeah, Kirk, rub it in. 20, 76. 26 where JMZ is. Or 29. Yeah, my brother is up in Marshall, Medina. And, uh, the other day they had all that nice was it yesterday was all that nice weather here greetings from shaky piper shaky piper hey brother uh welcome 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 if you don't if you haven't subbed to shaky piper sub to shaky piper um pembroke yeah but my brother lives in marshall which is east of dallas and I think a little west of Shreveport, Louisiana. So they're northeast Texas. And then today they had rain, obviously. In Texas, you're either getting snow and ice or rain, a ton of rain, I guess, this winter. Not much of a warm winter for Texas. Which kind of sucks. Because my mom went down for the winter. Um, yeah, you know, the other thing too, Polish Piper and anybody, this is, you can email Boswells and you can tell them what you, what you want. And when they get it in, if they could notify you, they'll mail it to you. So, Hey, Polish Piper, let me know what day you're coming up. Maybe I'll meet you down there. And we'll smoke a pipe together. I have not seen in all the times I've been down there, probably... I don't know. 12, 15 times. Um, button up my shirt here a little bit. I have not seen uh, Stonehaven. Period. And Penzance, when it's there, gone. Gone. Just like that. It is out of there this pipe is done so yeah just shoot me an email john bearded welshman at gmail.com and uh let me know if you want i'll meet you there we'll have a pipe together um i'm always looking for a good excuse to get out of the house and go down to boswell's although my wife doesn't like that because i spend a lot of money i'll be spending more money down there this week I'll be buying another pound of Boswell's Best. Stocking up on the on the blends that I really, really, really enjoy. Penzance from 2015. I have some here. Uh, I forget what year it is. That old Dirty Piper sent me. I'm about, Polish Piper, I'm about 20 minutes from Boswell's. 20 minutes away. Pipe time, 54 in Atlanta. I've never been to Atlanta. I've been to Savannah, but I haven't made it to Atlanta. So let me show you. This was my. This is the Boswell pipe I bought. This pipe, I have been smoking at least once a day since I bought it last Tuesday down at Boswell's. And it is just beautiful. Beautiful pipe. Signed, 
This is a 2020 that's been sitting there. Uh, it was sitting there on the shelf, and uh, I bought it. The time before I was down here was a little bit higher. This time it was marked down. <laughs> I think he's trying to get some of his 2020 stock. Um, they, they're making about five to six dozen a week right now. A little bit of a news flash for you. And uh, five to six dozen a week. And all the 2020s are about off the shelf. Okay, Waynesboro and Gettysburg. Um, I'm in Bowling Springs, which is just north of Gettysburg. About 15, 20, uh, maybe 30 minutes. No plastic bit. Nope, no plastic bits on it. You know, I've sort of gotten away from them because they're just, I don't know, just a pain to, to uh, keep clean. So I got to pull them off and I got to, they really mess up the stem. They really do mess up the stem. The crannies. Brick and mortar blend. Shaky pipe for smoking Cavendish Court. Um, can you guys see uh, loaded up some Penzance once upon a pipe you guys see his video today that huge um, Canadian that he got as a gift It's a Boswell's pipe. It's his first Boswell pipe. <sighs> Penzance, I should have left to dry out a little more. But uh, once upon a pipe, he got, yeah, he got a, he got a nice, gift in the mail yeah Kentucky long rifle that's what he's calling it he wouldn't say who gave it to him but I have an idea <laughs> I think a lot of us have an idea But, uh, yeah, Tony said, all he would say was, Tony. Yeah. That's it. When people find out, like, there's not a lot of, I don't understand because we have Boswell's here, but Boswell's is in Chambersburg, which is about 20 minutes south west of me and there's a lot of pipe smokers over there but there's not a lot of pipe smokers here and the people in the local area who do smoke pipe that do know about boswells don't say anything to anybody else and they can sell out on some of their stuff pretty quick But I'm smoking Penzance in here, and it's just a wonderful. This pipe is quickly becoming one of my favorite pipes. This is just a beautiful, not too big. It's got it. You can smoke a fair amount in here. Well, let's just say this. I smoked it yesterday, and I got about a good 30 minutes or so out of it. But when you're not puffing away and you're not talking and you're just sitting and you're enjoying the pipe, then you can get a, you can get a fair amount of time out of it. And it depends on, too on the tobacco. Uh, Stonehaven doesn't last long; it burns fast. I don't under, I don't know why.
you can hear my exhaust fan blowing. The wind's blowing in. It's blowing the smoke this way. Wife's not going to be happy about that. But uh, tomorrow's a big day for me. I had that broken pin in the back of my neck from the car accident in August, and I have to go get it x-rayed. And then I speak to the neurosurgeon who did my surgery, and he's going to let me know if it healed up or not. And what we may have to do if it's not healed up. So, I'm praying to God that I don't need surgery and that it's healing up okay. And then after that, I have a hearing for my social security disability. Because when you're on long-term disability, they want you, from my employer, they want you to file for social security disability. Back when I, my, it starts out as short term, then you go to long term. So when it was short term, they were telling me to file for Social Security. So I filed for Social Security uh, right after my surgery. Was that what they told me I had to do? So this has been a year coming. I've been turned down twice. So now we have a hearing. And I'm going to be doing a hearing over the phone. Obviously. Thank you for the prayers. <coughs> yeah, I hope it all works out too because I need to get on with my life. I need I need to I need to know which direction I'm going next, you know. And uh, you sit in limbo for so long it, it gets it works on you. It gets it it it's frustrating. To say the least, it's very frustrating. So I'd like to, you know, like to get this out of the way, get it over with. I'm going to open up my other window so I get across freezing here because it's getting too smoky. It's blowing so hard through the exhaust fan. It's blowing the smoke in, so maybe I can get a little cross breeze going and I'll just be cold for a little while. So. Yeah. Yeah, the government morons. Yeah, that's an understatement. <laughs> but they hold you up. You know, my, my employer wants me through the long-term disability, you, you start out with short-term, then if it goes to a certain amount of months, then you go into long-term. And then you have, to, you have to apply to keep your long-term insurance. You have to apply for um, Social Security disability. But you had to apply while you were on so short-term disability because they were planning on me being on long-term disability. So, which is kind of good, I guess, because then I'd still be waiting and even though we had the pandemic it got it got pushed through pretty quick which is nice so that's a good deal but I just need to be able to make some plans you know I don't know what to do they won't release me Signalman Tony hey brother good to have you welcome tonight uh I'm doing well I hope you're doing well but uh I'd like to make a game plan, you know? Can't do that. Um, they got me in limbo, you know? I, I have to watch what I'm doing, where I'm at, what I'm doing, where I'm at. You know, I can't... My... my the physician, let's just say the physician who's handling my case will not release me. Um... 
but he won't give his opinion. So, I'm kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place at the moment. And I, most, m most nine times out of ten, you don't know. They don't make the decision right there at the hearing nine times out of ten. There are times they will make a decision right at the hearing because it's a no-brainer. Um, my physical therapist doesn't want me going back to work, says I'm dangerous behind the wheel. I can't do any hard labor. I'm a blue-collar man. I, I sat behind a desk for six months, and I hated it. I wasn't good at it. I hated it. I did reports. I set up meetings. And, I mean, I wasn't bad at it, but I just, I, did, I wasn't good at it probably because I hated it. I'm a man that works with my hands, and, you know, I want to be able to continue to do that, and that's, you know, just one of them things, you know. But, and then when you're on Social Security Disability, you're only allowed to make so much money a month extra or else they deduct it from you. So that you're screwed either way. You're screwed either way. So do I go back to working with my hands to where, you know, I could potentially damage my neck even more than what it already is? And, you know, like I've said many times before, I've had the biggest fusion that you can get. At least that's what I was told. And that I shouldn't be doing hard labor anymore. Well, that's kind of hard to do when you're used to doing hard labor. Because after a while, fortunately, I've maintained my weight loss for the most part. And, you know, I won't be, I haven't gained a lot of weight. But I also haven't, I lost a lot of strength. So now, after tomorrow, excuse me, I'm going to force myself to do things. Um, as I can, because it still hurts, you know, I mean, it hurts all the time, but like today, these damp, cold days, thank you for all the thumbs up, by the way, these damp, cold days are really hard, really hard, uh, it was really painful today, it was hard for me to be in a standing position, I had to lay back pretty much all day with ice, heat, ice, heat, ibuprofen, or Excedrin, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, thank you, 56. This is a very nice study pipe. Richard Keating, welcome, sir. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, yeah, I should have let this Penzance sit out a little bit longer. Teens, teens in the Connecticut. It's going to get down to low, low twenties here tonight, so that's not too bad compared to up there or uh, Canada. Ben Greenman. Yeah, hey, you know, it's life, man. It's life. It's how it's how life works, you know. You hit. You have your highs. You have your lows, and uh, you make it work. You figure it out. You don't get too down and out about it. You have to press on. You do what you got to do, and uh, I have good moments. I have bad moments, and when I have the good moments, I take advantage of them. And do what I can do. But I'm ready to I'm ready to have closure on some of this stuff so that I can figure out financially what I'm gonna do, what I wanna do, and uh, you know, try to make extra money. I started doing super chats on my lives, and then I found out Facebook won't pay me out until it gets to a certain amount. Or Facebook, YouTube. <laughs> it's a 
thinking, man, they get you coming and going, man. They put all their commercials up and they get you coming and going. I can make cat trees. Merle, Merle can put some cats in the trees. Pittsburgh Piper. I was out last weekend. Out to Pittsburgh last weekend, Dave. Dropped my son off on Friday. Came home Saturday morning. Yeah, St. David's Day. Cheers. And, uh... Yeah, the Bearded Walshman Pipe Shop. If I had as much tobacco as Mel Harris, you better believe I'd have one. You know... Uh, it wouldn't be a bad idea to open up a pipe shop. Yeah, we should have, Dave. What happened was they were calling for some bad weather on the mountain, on the turnpike going up the mountain, and I did hit some um, heavy fog, um, some rain, and there were some icy patches. I was white-knuckling it. So, Big Phil... How's my friend Big Phil doing? So, but there's plenty of times for me to go out there again. And if I could have stayed the whole weekend, Dave, I would have I would have contacted you and tried to meet up at some point. But yeah, Permonte Brothers. We have we have two of them here in this area. Actually, one's not too far from where I live right now. Um, yeah, but I'll get out there again. We'll do it again. Maybe we can get Beans to uh, meet up with us. Come up out of West Virginia. Sneak across the Pennsylvania border. Because he's not far from there. I don't think he's not that far. Probably maybe in about an hour at most. At most, maybe an hour. Greg, the tunnel take. Hey, the great the last video you did, Greg. That was a great video. Everything's going good. Everything's going real good. Um, yeah, Permonti's overrated. I got to ask you, Pittsburgh Piper, have you ever had the Ben Rothless burger? They say it's really good. Have you ever had that? Should have put some coffee in it. Everybody says to try the Ben Rothless burger. I don't know about that. But... And now our governor has decided to loosen up the restrictions a little bit for sporting events, from what I understand. How about the restaurants? How about the small businesses? I don't get that. I don't, I don't get that one bit. Um, they just had a thing where, you know, it was okay for them to do that, but it ain't okay for us to... to uh, Congregate together, you know, the dictator. Yeah, exactly. I just had some event and they said, Ain't it funny that they can do this and they can do that? And then everybody else has got to stay shut down. I was kind of, I'm kind of hoping, I think they got some stuff in the works or trying to recall them or something. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm just not a I'm not a fan of our governor. We've got people getting vaccinated. Then they're telling you, well, even if you get the vaccine, you know, you still have to wear a mask. Can't hug anybody. Can't do anything. Can't you have stuff social distance. I mean, when's it going to end? There has to be an end. There has to be an end. It's hurting the economy. It's hurting people mentally and physically. It's hurting families. It's hurting business. I mean, when's it going to end? Come up with an end time. 
Really? Yeah, I've heard a couple people. I asked my son if he's ever gotten one out there. Said he hasn't. Said he never knew about it. He's not a football fan. He likes auto racing. Not NASCAR. He likes the Porsches and whatever, the sports car racing or whatever. They, road races, road rallies and stuff like that. Yeah. No end to a controller like Governor Wolf. Hey. I heard Virginia is going to vote. They voted to legalize marijuana. And the governor is going to sign it into law. <laughs> you know how many potheads are going to be rushing out of Pennsylvania to go smoke? Yeah, it is a coincidence, isn't it, Phil? Makes you go, hmm, something ain't right there. Biden's the savior. Yeah, you have the one up there. Uh, Richard, what's the name of the track up there? Uh, right there in Connecticut. Um, New London? Want to say New London? Yeah, that's the thing. This is bad for you, but they're going to legalize pot. Anything you inhale into the, I'm a medical guy. I was in the medical profession for almost 20 years. Anything you inhale other than oxygen into your lungs is not good for you. Stafford Springs. Okay. Um. They're not making it here in Pennsylvania either. They have med medicine, state, uh, you can get state medical marijuana or whatever, and they have medicine shops up. They're not making any money because it's too expensive. They're buying it on the street. It's cheaper to buy it on the street than it is to buy it in, in the medicinal shops and stuff. But um, anyhow, what are we talking about? Dad, going on, I was in a train of thought. Um, yeah, oh, lungs, oxygen, you know, the oxygen. So we don't inhale. I don't know anybody that inhales pipe. If you do, you're a bigger man than me. You got bigger balls than I do. Um, but I don't inhale it. Um, same thing with cigars. But the beauty of America has always been this. You should be free to choose to do what you want to do. There's a lot of things that aren't good for us, but it's our right to choose to do those. Then we are accountable to ourselves and we should take ownership if we overeat and, and get obese and have heart attacks and strokes, if we drink too much alcohol, if we do dangerous things. That's my choice and I take ownership of that. New Loudon, that's what it is, New Loudon. Yeah, that, that amazes me in, in Massachusetts where they banned flavored tobacco, but they legalize pot. What? Yeah, cigars. Never smoked pot. Never had the desire. I really don't. I don't have a problem with it. I mean, you do what you want to do. My personal opinion is legalize it, okay? And that that's fine. Legalize it. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. But it's like alcohol. At the end of the day, it's your responsibility to do the right thing. And if you're going to smoke pot and get high and go out and drive a car or work with machinery, somebody gets hurt or killed, that's your fault. Not my fault. It's not the gun's fault. It's the human being's fault. It's the person's fault. It's not a gun's fault. It's not the car's fault. It's not the alcohol's fault. It's the person. That's the problem with this country. We don't own up to our, you know, 
personal responsibilities. We don't take ownership of our, of our uh, mistakes. We want to blame everything and everybody else. And that's the problem with this country. Well, it's a problem with this world. But we live in a fallen world. And that's the way it is. You know, I live my life. Um, I'm a fairly clean guy. You know, I don't. My, all my rough days and ruckusing. You know, my rabble rousing, whatever you want to call it. Man, I was done with that almost 30 years ago, man. <laughs> it's just. And the older you get, the harder it is. Yeah. Yep. Everybody wants their rights, but they don't want responsibility. They don't want to take the responsibility of it. You know, my dad always taught us and my mom, you know, at the end of the day, you make your choices and then you got to live with them. And that's the way it works. Anybody remember Paul Harvey? Paul Harvey News. Good day. I miss Paul Harvey. I miss guys like Paul Harvey. Like the old song says, by the hag, I wish a buck was still silver. It was back when the country was strong. Back before Elvis and the Vietnam War came along. A nanny state, yeah. Yeah. 56, you're right. You do bad, pay the fiddler. It's the way life used to work. You know, you shake a man's hand, you shake it with a firm handshake. It used to be your word was your bond. And a handshake sealed the deal. And when you gave your word, you kept it. Ain't that the truth, Simplex? Ain't that the truth? I think I'm going to put hardwood floors down in this room. I don't like the carpet. I don't like carpet. I don't like carpet at all. Thought I heard Merle at the door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ten out of every, ten out of every ten people are gonna die. You know, and what's the old saying? Uh, you, you you reap what you sow. Some people would call it karma. Comes back to bite you in the rear end, down the road, and it's true. Um, you do bad things, you will get caught. You don't take care of your body, you will pay a price. You don't keep your house up nice, it's going to fall down. You don't do preventative maintenance on your car you have a small minor issue with your car you let it go you don't fix it it becomes a big problem having trouble keeping these pipes lit tonight put them yapping too much 
Yep, yep, yep. But I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go soon. Uh, what time is it? Uh, in about ten minutes or so. <clears throat> I got an hour drive tomorrow to go to my surgeon. I got to go down to Penn State University Medical down in Hershey. It's about an almost an hour away, and so I won't be on past much past eight tonight. I'd love to, but I just can't. Cause I gotta get I gotta get to bed and get up early and take care of things tomorrow and then hopefully tomorrow. I'd love to get a ruling tomorrow, but I don't think it's gonna happen. They told me two to three weeks. But hey, he might rule in my favor tomorrow. I don't know. We shall see. We shall see. But, you know, I got a few things, ideas in mind of things I'd like to do. Yeah, the core believes shaky. They have been abandoned by our government, and we're seeing it today. You know what? I, I hate that, you know, everything gets turned political. And so, let me say this. We're not talking about anything political here. We're talking about life. We're talking about what's going what's going down in this country and what's going on. I honestly, now I grew up, I was a teenager through the 80s. I honestly believe my generation is the last generation that really understands the value of hard work. And if you want it, you earn it. Whether it be a promotion, respect, whatever you earn it it's not given to you it's earned and i'm sad to say there's not many young people in the other in the younger generation of my you know that look at things the same way you know they're always wanting a handout you know you want me to pay so i saw something today on social media that says let's you want us to pay for your college which you chose to go to and you can't get a job because you have a philosophy degree. Or you just can't get a job in your field because it's oversaturated. Why not pay for the people who have cancer? They didn't ask for it. <laughs> Preach it. Yeah, the millennials. People didn't ask for cancer. Let's give them the money. Let's pay for their medical treatments. Let's give their families some money to live on because... I know people that have cancer or have had cancer and there's a lot of medicines that insurance just doesn't cover and or they just don't have good enough health insurance and I'm not for universal health care. I do not want that. Um, but let's help let's help people out who need it. I told all my kids, if you want to go to college, that's great. That's fine. That's awesome. But not everybody should go to college. I mean, you know, there's a shortage of truck drivers. 75,000 trucking jobs. There's a shortage of truck drivers. There's a shortage of EMTs and paramedics. There's a shortage of carpenters, plumbers, masons, boiler makers, welders. There's a 100, well, this was about six, seven years ago. I think it was 125,000 uh welding jobs there's a shortage of 125,000 in welding jobs good paying jobs i mean i know how to weld but you got to get certified for anybody to hire you hey skip howdy doody how's everything down in el paso the wife let you out for a little bit, I guess, huh? Everybody say hello to Skip. Skip, did you take advantage of your birthday celebration? Did you did you prolong it out a week, two weeks?
Yeah. Yeah, I'm Generation X. Um, <laughs> yeah, they said we were screwed up. I, I grew up in the 80s, which was the decade of debauchery. debauchery. You know, what if it, if it feels good, do it. Do it. Now, granted, there's a lot of guys in their 50s that are not doing so well health-wise because they, they partied in excess. Um, I, had a, I have a few friends that have issues with liver and kidneys because of all the alcohol that they drank and overdid it and partied, you know, but we survived. We survived it. Night, Shaky. Ron Ward, hey, brother, how you doing, man? How's everything going for you, buddy? Autotex, yep. And that's getting to be a hard job. My son-in-law is a, a diesel mechanic, and they keep changing the vehicles up so much. You got to keep going for continuing education, and you don't make squat. Auto techs don't make squat. Pipe Brothers heading out, or fifty-six. All right, brother. But, uh, yeah. Good to have you on here, Ron. I hope you're doing well. Well, oh, it goes my computer. Something wrong with my computer. There's something wrong with my iPhone. I don't know what's going on. Ron, how you feeling? How's everything going? Treatment's going good. Seems like the wind died down outside. Well, I'm 52, Richard. So, yeah, that sounds about right. The Breakfast Club. That's like my wife's, one of my wife's favorite movies. 80s were great, man. I love the 80s. Good music, good times. It was a great decade to grow up in. The country was strong. The economy was great. I shouldn't say great, good. Very good, not great, but very good. We had a great president. <laughs> We used to sneak in. We had a little theater in town, and it was they were they would run movies two weeks after they came out in the big theaters, and it was like two fifty to go in, which was cheap because it was like eight or nine bucks back then in the reg big theaters, and uh, we used to go we used to sneak in. Yeah, 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 I'm old enough. I'm old enough. You know. I remember when we used to blow on birthday cakes. Man, we were wild. <laughs> now, now everybody's afraid to do anything. <laughs> hey. How many how many jump their bikes on homemade ramps on the hard concrete sidewalks and crashed? We survived. We used to ride in the back of pickup trucks. We survived. We had a station wagon. Or the seat faced out backwards. We never wore seat belts. We survived. Yep. Travis Tritt, the country singer, has a new album coming out. And he was on the Grand Ole Opry on Saturday night. We watch it. On uh, we listen or we watch, depends on and it was it's about it's it's a nostalgic song. When when and it's called When You Could Smoke in Bars. <laughs> yeah. No helmets. JFK assassinated. Yeah. Uh, I, was, I wasn't even born when he... 
I was born the year we landed on the moon. We landed on the moon. But I remember when, you know, my dad used to send me into the store as a seven, eight year old kid and say, go get me a pack of Cools menthol in a box. <laughs> Buck 75. <laughs> now we're afraid to let anybody do anything. We survived. We survived. Never got into smoking cigarettes. I tried them for like two weeks. Couldn't deal with it. Smoked cigars. Chewed a lot of tobacco. Um, I chew herbal stuff now. And I still chew some Levi Garrett on occasion. But yeah. Steph. Steph and Skip. Hello, hello. My mom. My mom. Back when your mom could beat the snot out of you in a grocery store and nobody would think twice about it. Nowadays they call the cops. Oh, I experienced frequent beatings at the stores. Mom, 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 buy me this, buy me this, buy me that. Back. You got a backhand, man. Cigarettes and vending machines. Good Lord, that's a long time ago. Well, that's good, Ron. Um, I keep you in my prayers, man. I don't know how you you do it. Tough. You can get up off the floor. Bass Piper. Hey, while you're here, buddy. Bass Piper's gone. There he is. Oh no, man. Well, we'll keep we'll keep her in our prayers. Um, Bass Piper's gall. I'll be doing a video for you. Everybody check out Bass Piper. He's got a 250 gall going. Hey, by the way, brother, you were talking about, you know, your count was up and then it goes down and then it goes up because it happens all the time. You said it, Steph. You you said it's woman's work. Not me. Well, ba Bass Piper, we'll keep your mom in our prayers and everything. Uh, but uh, I'll be doing a video. I'll be doing a VR for your goal. And I'm glad you're at 250. Let's get you up to 300. Then the next goal will be 500. Yeah, no. That's YouTube, man. Didn't used to be that way. Didn't used to be that way. I don't know why they do that now. Um, well, they, was it last year or so? They started demonetizing people for no apparent reason. And they mess with your subs. And then you're unsubbed from channels on occasion. What's with that? I don't understand that. That, that blows my mind. I don't know how that happens. So what I do is if I don't hear from somebody or I don't see somebody for a while, I'll go in and look them up. Sometimes I'll find I've been unsubscribed. I mean, how the, how the heck does that happen? Bass Piper, he's a cool dude. I, like, I love him, man. Check out his channel. He's got that gall. He's giving away some really good prizes. That Meerschaum pipe that he's giving away, let me tell you something, folks. That's a $45 pipe online. I think is what it's going for at Meersham, Missouri Meersham. That corn cob is like a $45, $50 pipe. He's sending, giving you tobacco and a hat and a sticker. I mean, hey, ain't bad. And it's only for presenters. It's only for presenters. So if you're a presenter, get on there. If you're not a presenter, sub him anyway because 
his next goal, he said he's going to open it up to everybody. And I get that. I get that. So that's why I'm in, because I'm a presenter. I don't do a lot of goal. I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't put in for a lot of goals because I've won several. I have a lot of stuff, and I like to see the newer people, the lurkers and the presenters, win. So I'll probably, I don't know, I really would like that that uh, pipe. But I'll probably do the goal, do the goal and do the VR and designate it to somebody else. To If I win, it goes to that person. Because um, I just, you know, I've won a number of them. I have a lot of pipes and tobacco and, you know. I got 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I got about 45, 50 pipes. I used to have 75. Got rid of a lot of them. Got rid of a lot of them. Because I just, you know, wasn't smoking them. And I just wanted those pipes to be enjoyed by other people. Six. I have 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 15 pipes that are in regular rotation. So. Pipe time, you will. You'll get in there. But it's a very generous gall for a 250 gall. I mean, those prizes, if you cashed them out, that's probably about $100, maybe close to $100. Uh, I don't know how much the hats go for and stuff, but I mean, that, that's a nice, and he's mailing it out to you, you know, so that costs money. That's at least eight bucks at the least, depending on where it goes. And if it goes overseas, it's more than that. Um, so, presenters, get on there, do your VRs. And hopefully, you win. And, but I'm probably going to designate, if I win, I would designate the prize to someone else. I'd, I'd like to see, I like, you know, I, people have given me a lot back in this community, and I want to give back. And I appreciate that. So, Well, the room's not getting too smoky. It was smart to open that window up, get a little cross breeze. It's not too cold. I have a portable heater in here, too, just to, because every time I open up this window and put the big exhaust fan in, I run the portable heater, and it keeps it nice in here. Yeah, exactly, brother. It's what it's all about. Thank you, Steph. I appreciate you, too. I love your hats. Now, what are those hats called? They're like, it's like a, like a fez. I don't want to call it a fez that you make. What are they called? Um, I don't want to call them a fez because I don't think that's what they are. I see Skip wearing one. I see that you make them. I got her calculation last Thursday since she was with me. That gave her a shot too. She had chills, eggs. You know, issues. Well, that's good, Ron. That you got no issues from the vaccine. Smoking caps. Is that what you call them? Smoking caps. Maybe I need to order one of them. That's right. This is the best community. There's a lot of communities in YouTube. I have never seen any that are as generous as the YTPC. Hands down. Hands down. All right. Base Piper, you go take care of your family. God bless you, brother. Um, I, need to, I need to email you, my friend. Uh, I don't have your email. John Bearded Welshman at gmail.com. Base Piper, send me an email. I need some help. I need to find a quartet, and I'm wondering if you might be able to help me. So if you could email me and I can get a hold of you. If not, I'll get I'll figure out a way. I'll get on your channel and I'll bug you till I get you. But wait, if you could, that'd be appreciated. Appreciate it very much if you could. I need I need to find a quartet for a conference. That's what I need.
Yeah. Skip, you need to get one of them satin smoking jackets like, uh, what's his name? Uh, Hugh um, Hefner. You know, smoking jacket with the little, uh, what do they call that thing? Ascot. <laughs> to go with your pipe smoking hat. <laughs> yeah, wait, if I if I could if you can give me some ideas of who I could get, that'd be great. It's not gonna be till next year, till next November, but I need to I'm helping a guy with the conference and he asked me if I knew anybody and said I know a couple people. And you're the one guy that would know because you've been into quartets. That's it. Perique Piper Skip. Saturday, you need to wear pajamas and your smoking cap. You need a Hugh Hefner it. And Steph needs to wear bunny ears and little whiskers. That would be a show. That would be your all-time Highest rated Saturday live. Going to do it? Good. You agreed to it? Good. Hey, everybody, they're going to do it. <laughs> it's bugging me. Steph has to wear a bunny outfit. And then you have to get tattoos of this mug. Ooh, that wind picked up. You see that? Dan Rowan, yeah? Um, you guys heard of Axe Body Wash? When they came out and the guy would get in the elevator when they first came out and all these women would be all over him. Yeah, I used to joke around and say, yeah, I've been riding the elevator for three hours and not one woman has even jumped me. Axe Body Wash, I think it was. Now I just use soap. Sock it to me. Laughing. That was a great show. All right, everybody. I'm going to call it quits. I got to get up at 6 o'clock tomorrow. So it's about 8.15 our time. So I'm going to get everything situated. And I'm going to head off to bed. So I appreciate you all coming on. Um, check out Bass Pipers Golf. If you're a presenter, you're eligible to enter the drawing for the golf. And uh, keep everything going. Irish Spring is the only. That's all I use. Irish Spring. And uh, thank you all for coming on tonight. Greatly appreciate it. I love you all. God bless you. God loves you. I love you. I'll see you on the next Monday night live. And uh, have a great week, everybody. And I look forward to checking out some of the videos that y'all are doing, especially the VRs to uh, Bass Piper uh, for his goal that's coming up, his 250 goal. God bless everybody. Good night. Light them up.